Good morning, Stanford High. Happy Monday, and welcome back to another edition of the Connection Time News. I'm Lalith Goley. And I'm Brett Lubliner. Spooky! Paint night. That's right, Lalith. The art department brought back one of last year's most successful fundraisers. Andrew Potashnik has more. On Friday, October 12th, the class of 2020 held its second annual paint night, hosted by SHS art teacher Kim Wheeler. I spoke to the event organizers beforehand for more information. Hi, I'm here with Hannah Bouchel, the chairman of the Paint Night fundraiser for the class of 2020. Do you have any comments to say? Um, this event was done last year. It's the second annual year that it's happening. Um, last year, it was we made amazing profit from it. We made over $1,000, and we're hoping to make even more this year. Cool. Hi, I'm here with Miss Wheeler. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I teach drawing and painting one and two and sculpture one and two, and I hide away on the third floor most days. Hi, I'm here with uh, Mr. White. What was your involvement in this fundraiser? Um, as of now, I'm just filling in for Miss Clark. Uh, she's the brains behind this operation, um, but as the junior class co-advisor, it is my duty to come and make sure things run smoothly. So, so far, my involvement is just making sure that these kids get everything they need to get done and make sure Miss Wheeler's ready to go. Um, I am providing the instruction for this junior class fundraiser. What do you think about the idea of this fundraiser? Uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, they have these art bars all over the place now. I think it's a great way to people to come out and hang out for a little bit, you know, have some pizza, drink some beverages, talk, and uh, bring home a great piece of art. All right, thank you. All right. Did you paint this? I did paint that, yeah. Yes. Very good. Thanks, Andrew. I think we get the picture. What was wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you can't please everybody. I don't know. This next video is really funny. I think it might please everybody. Oh, is it the one about the bugs? No, this is the one about how some teachers can't understand our slang. The bug one comes later. All right, well, that sounds pretty funny, too. Here we go. Hi, I'm Lindsay, and I'm here with... Mr. Howe. And we want to know if you know what LMK means. Let me know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Do you know what gassed means? When you inflate someone's ego. <laughs> what is STG? STG stand for same. Why is that so big in my face like that, yo? Back that up. STG. I don't know. Somebody. S STG? Yeah. S swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophia, and I'm here with... Mr. K. Do you know what ship means? Ship? Yeah. S-H-I-P? Yeah. Ship. I know what it means, but I don't know what it stands for. It doesn't stand for anything. It's like, oh, I ship them. I deliver them? <laughs> no. I'm Devin, and I'm here with... Mr. Wahite. What does STG mean? STG. Uh... Shut the gate. Stop talking, Gus. Hey, congratulations. It was me, Gus the Bus. What does gassed mean? Gassed? Yeah. Like tired. Like I'm gassed. I'm out. They're like hyped up. Hi, I'm Morgan, and I'm here with Miss George. Hi, guys. Uh, what does brick mean? Hmm. I don't know. What if I was like, it's brick in here? Um, maybe warm? Cold. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie and I'm here with Mr. Gladstone. Do you know what spill the tea means? Spill the tea? I guess like, let out the information. Like, tell people, tell people what, uh, you know, some, a secret. I'm Devin and I'm here with... Miss Latour. Hi. Coach Latour. What does NYB mean? Jeez, I don't mind your business. None of your business. Yeah. None of your business. None of your business. 
What does RT stand for? Retweet. Yeah, retweet, retweet. That was definitely pretty funny. Those teachers have no idea what we're talking about. Funny, that's usually how I feel about them when I'm sitting in class. Speaking of class, were you ever in Mr. Moynihan's class back in the day? Yeah, I had him for AP World History. What happened to that guy? He actually spent a year at AIT as an administrative intern, but now he's back at SHS as our newest administrator. Caitlin Filonowski and Brianna Ayerfino talked to him about his new job. Well, it hasn't changed that much, to be honest. Um, there's a few new faces that weren't here when I left a couple of years ago. Um, a few new programs that have been, been getting started, like ECS, um, that was just kind of being in the planning stages when I left. Um, but it feels like home, so not a lot has changed. Well, like I said, um, you know, this, this has been my home for 12 years before I left. Um, I've been teaching here since I moved to Connecticut. And, um, and so when the position opened up last year, um, I, I couldn't not apply for it. I, the, the idea of coming back to Stanford High, seeing all my old friends, uh, my former students, um, one more time and working with them again was just too, too enticing to, to, turn, to turn down. So it was a very great opportunity that I, that I was excited to take on. Stanford High is a huge school, right? We have almost 1,800 kids. Um, Tons of different programs, um, athletics, uh, drama, um, you know, the, the arts. Um, AITE is much more focused, um, you know, interdistrict magnet. So, it all, so in addition to ha it having students from outside of Stanford, um, which creates a different dynamic there than here, um, they also are really much more focused kind of solely on academics. They have a few um, extracurricular activities that they offer, but the, the life at Stanford High really doesn't end at 2.05. Um, it keeps going and going and going until like 8, 9 o'clock every night. Thanks, girls, and best of luck to Mr. Moynihan in his new position. Yeah, being an administrator must be pretty lit. You know what else is pretty lit? This better not be a stupid pun. Lit Club! I hate you, you have no friends. <laughs> I'm Giovanni Alzate, and I'm here with senior Matthew Dottolo. Nice to be here with you. And I heard you're actually starting the uh, literature club. How is that going out for you so far? Uh, it's been going well. Um, in the summer, I had an idea of, uh, you know, starting a club uh, based around, like, creative writing. Like, there's a community here of uh, kids at Stanford High, you know, they're interested in writing, and they try to take creative writing as a class. But not everyone, you know, gets in the spots because it fills up quickly. It's a popular class. But, yeah, the club's goal is just, you know, it's very casual. After Tuesdays, we all meet in uh, room 206, Miss Hatzel's room. Anybody can come in and write anything they want. It's a very open, very relaxed club, a good atmosphere. Uh, people could, you know, just chill, work by themselves, or they could work together on something, uh, an idea of a story they had, and publish it in the school magazine even if they wanted to. That's great. I mean, you're getting people involved. Literature club sounds like a very good idea. You know when your first meeting is going to happen? Uh, we actually already had our uh, first meeting. It was more of an introductory thing, uh, but we are going to kick things off at our next meeting, uh, which will happen next Tuesday. And uh, I'm very eager to see how uh, this year goes. It's the first year of this club. Well, I actually heard they changed the name to the Night Writers Club. Seriously? So anyway, the Night Writers Club isn't the only thing going on at Stanford High. Check out Andrew Potashnik again, this time with an update on how things are going with the music department. What have the Stanford High music ensembles done so far this year? Well, so far this year, we've just been uh, preparing for the activities to come. But the, the one um, show that we've done is we've played at the uh, Sanford High football games. So we played a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was our first one. And we're going to be at the pink out um, on Friday and then the rest of the football games. What is coming up for the Stanford High Music Department? Well, I mean, we have many things coming up from now to the end of the year. Uh, just to name a few, we're going to be... We have some uh, holiday events coming up, some parades, the Veterans Day Parade, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Stanford High Marching Band usually goes to. We're going to be performing at the mall. We're starting up Winter Percussion and Jazz Band. Um, and then we're, uh, amongst other activities that we'll be doing, the big thing that we're doing this year is a, is a big music department trip to Washington, D.C. Can you tell me more about that trip to D.C.? Well, yeah, it's going to be the first trip that uh, myself and Miss Naguli are going to be doing together. Um, we're going to be going, again, down to Washington, D.C. We'll be playing at the Lincoln Memorial. We're going to go visit sites. Uh, we're going to uh, catch a National Symphony. Um, 
And, uh, you know, it should be a really great time. We'll be there for a few days playing, performing, listening to music, and checking out the sites. What have your ensembles done so far this year? Well, this year we are uh, starting to really learn to play and sing as a group. They're all new students, so that takes a lot of effort and energy to, to blend and teach the basics. Um, our Madrigal Singers did um, perform down at Veterans Park for a, a city event early in the year. We also did sing at the Convocation at the beginning of the year. And we are planning to do uh, a number of things this season. We have um, the Tree of Life Ceremony, which is a, a hospice-sponsored event for caregivers for hospice patients. We have our trip to New York City at the holiday time, uh, performing at the MetLife Building. That's the concert choir, the Madrigal Singers, and the orchestra. We'll be at the mall, again, with the band program that same night. That's December 13th. Um, we have our holiday fair here at Stanford High. We're going to be doing our Christmas caroling when I believe it's Mr. White's going to be Santa Claus. Um, so we do have a number of things coming up. Why should people join the band? Well, I, I, think, uh, I think the band is, a, is one of the, the best uh, programs in the school. Um, the music program generally we we do lots of things we travel we perform we're respected um we we always uphold uh great values within the community and uh and uh, and our city and our state and uh, it's just uh, something great for people to do and i think whether you have experience or you have little experience uh, it's always worth coming by and giving it a shot so i would urge everybody even if you were in middle school and um you know, you, you're thinking about, do I still want to do this or not do it? I, I would give it a shot in high school because it's a much different ballgame. Why should people join your ensembles? Well, it's a great way to um, hone their skills, their confidence. It's, a, it's really a plus to be able to do something in a group and not have to, you know, have all eyes on you you're doing something with the group so you're getting confidence and you're expressing yourself which is really very important to, to do especially nowadays um, I think it really touches the soul it builds uh, independence and discipline and it's a lot of fun singing and and playing music and I think it's something that is a lifelong endeavor for people yes okay hi I'm here with Joanne Perez what is your involvement in the music department um, I am Tri, I'm president and currently the drum major of band and marching band. What does that mean? Um, well, that means that during performances such as the football games, I'd be conducting the whole band in their different um, songs. Um, I think people should join the music department at Stanford High because it gives you a lot of opportunities in terms of for, like performances. We have performed in, like around the city of Stanford, even outside the state, and um, we travel a lot, which is great. And during these performances, we are able to have really long-lasting relationships with the people around you. So I feel like that's a really good um, just activity to have behind you and a really good stress reliever. Love it. And now for something completely different. It's almost election day. Election day? But I'm only 17. I can't vote. Yes, but some students at Stanford High can, and these students want to encourage you to register to vote now. Over the summer, the March for Our Lives organization held a cross-country tour to over 65 cities. While addressing the issues of gun violence in America, the main message the teens tried to deliver was to hit the polls. They encouraged teens and young adults to register to vote and get others to register as well. The 2018 midterm election is around the corner, and the deadline to register to vote is coming even closer. So if you're watching this in connection time, it's tomorrow, Tuesday, October 30th. Issues like immigration, LGBTQ rights, healthcare, and gun control are all controlled by policy, made by policy politicians that we vote for that make, pass, and approve laws that affect our lives, our friends' lives, and, you know, just people's lives. So here's what the people at Stanford High have to say about the importance of voting. And it really, we really need everyone to come out and vote because that's the only way that uh, um, the candidate that really represents the population will be elected. It is super important for students to vote so we can finally have like a say in how our society turns out to be. Uh, I think it's good for young kids to get out and voice their opinions on matters that are going on. 
society. So, and especially students of color, because um, recently with all the things happening, it's important that we vote or use our voices so that we can impact a change. What do you want to say to the people who say that they aren't going to vote and think that their vote doesn't matter? Every vote and every voice matters. So. It, it really doesn't take that long to do it either, and if you are eligible to, I mean, why not? Plenty of people who are like my age, like 15, they can't and they want to. So, I mean, if you have the chance to, you, you should. It'll definitely impact a change because every voice will be heard. Uh, the truth is, is that that thought process that votes don't matter is what leads to the wrong candidate getting elected and we need to get people out. So it's like a midterm election, so the electoral college that is not um, like included, so every voice, every voice um, will, be, like, will be heard, and it's like super important to do it. If, if everyone doesn't show up, then we're gonna get someone like um, our current president. You can easily register online at vote.org, or you can take a picture of this QR code that will bring you to the March for Our Lives website to register there. Or you can text CHANGE to 97779. If you're not sure who to vote for, well, there's two main political parties, as you probably already know, Democrats and Republicans. You could go on isidewith.com to take a quick voter guide quiz to see which politician on your state's ballot best agrees with you on issues like marijuana legalization, abortion rights, gun control, and immigration. Once you get your results, you'll see which politician best agrees with you and you can make your decision on who to vote for from there. If you're not sure where to vote, you can check on vote.org to see where your voting location is. And if you're not sure if you're already registered, you can check there too. Sounds good. Now there's a... Oh my God, there, there's a big bug on you. Help, help me, help me. Because oh my God, no, don't play. Yo, don't play. No, Stop. No. Oh my God. He flew on your back. Really? I like half oh days. What did you feel about the half days at the beginning of the school year? Um, I think that it helped freshmen Wait, adapt. There's a bug on me. Oh, oh my god, Daniel! <laughs> 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 oh my god, Shannon. Oh my god, there's a Shannon! No! Stop! Stop! Where is it? Where is it? Where? Where? Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off. It was really hot. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's <laughs> you! <laughs> it's in your hair! It's like all up in your hair now! Oh bro, I'm not playing! It's in your hair! Pick your hair out! Bro, I'm about to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, it was a disappointment to oh, have that Oh, there's a bug on you! Oh my god, there's a bug on you! You're lying. <laughs> no. Oh my god, it's huge! You just did it to you just did it for your show. That's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my god. There's a huge bug on you. Oh bug on you. Take your backpack off. Oh, it's still on. It's still oh my god. Oh my god. It's still on you. Oh it's on your back. It's on your back. Can you take it off. Oh my god. I'm not touching it. No. Can you take it off, please? I'm not touching it. Oh my god. It's huge. Now connection time news is over. No, help me.
here's John Bolognino with the latest uh, on our new Latin. There's new online Latin classes? Yes, don't let the news stun you into not being able to say the news. All right, one more take, Lily. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I think we get the picture. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> There's an outtake right there. Yeah, so dumb. What's